All right, we are entering the second week of Modern Horizons 3 being legal, and I decided to jump on the RAL train. Yes, RAL Monsoon Mage is the flip planeswalker that's catching everybody by storm. <laughs> but I didn't want to do the Ruby Medallion Mono Red Shell that everyone's already doing, because that final build of that is far from done, and I've been experimenting a little. But I wanted to try it in an old shell called Gift Storm. That's what you see here on your screen. I will be breaking the deck down just a little bit, so if you're already familiar with it, feel free to go ahead and skip right into the games, but make sure you start by hitting the subscribe button. Well, because the Magic Online flip cards are incredibly ugly looking like this, I'm going to start with this one here for Ral. Uh, Ral Monsoon Mage is the new card from Modern Horizons 3 that is the, I guess you could call it the frame of Baral Chief of Compliance. And Ral Monsoon Mage is a 1 3 for 2 mana legendary creature. Instants and sorceries cost one less to cast. That's the main and most important part of this to do what we call Storm. But more importantly, they tend to refer to these as enablers. You know, you put your enabler in play, it allows your deck to function to get to your win. The thing is, this enabler is also a payoff. Because whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell uh, during your turn, you may flip a coin. If you lose the flip, it deals one damage to you. Not very good. Not very good at all. But if you win the flip, then you may exile Ral. If you do, return to the battlefield transformed under his owner's control. So the interesting thing about this is when I first read it, I already liked the card. Um, and I'll show you the backside in a minute. But the card was better than I thought because of this word here here may i just I overlooked it or didn't really think much about it and the reason that may is so important is because oh still ugly hold with me for a sec his backside uh ral leyline prodigy enters the battlefield with an additional loyalty counter on him for each instant and sorcery spell you cast this turn that is insane because with two loyalty, if you get to six instant sorceries cast prior to him, when he flips, he starts with eight, and you can immediately ultimate. And what makes the ultimate so devastating, you exile top eight cards library, you can cast instant and sorceries without paying their mana cost. That's basically game over. It's like a an enabler card and a payoff card in one card. And that, in Magic the Gathering, is absurdly powerful. A couple other notes with Ral, especially on the front side, is if it's on your turn and they go to remove it, you can respond by trying to flip it. It, tr it leaves the battlefield and transforms. And the, the first two abilities are still good. You can keep the um, minus one on your instant sorceries, or you can arc some damage, draw a card maybe. So anyway, that is the uh, new card. And I'll be going over how the deck works. So primarily, we call the deck Storm because it plays cards like this, Grape Shot. And Grape Shot is not a good magic card on its own. It deals one damage for two mana at sorcery speed. That rate is terrible. But the Storm Mechanic says whenever you cast this spell, you get to copy the spell for each spell that was cast prior to it. That's the Storm Mechanic. So if I go one spell, two spell, three spell, Grape Shot, that's four damage. And the interesting thing is when you cast the card, it's kind of like Cascade, casting the card triggers Storm. So even if they have a counter spell or can stop your card, like even if they have a... Um, a a chalice of the void in play you still get to trigger storm and the the copies are not being cast and it's a separate spell on the stack for each one now you can counter the triggered ability with something like i don't know consigned to memory but either way this card uh you build up to it by getting to effectively 20 storm but i'll go down a few of the lines so we're going to play uh what we call the rituals so not that one pyretic ritual uh probably the uh baseline card you know it's the background here at the recording of this video, this card's going for like $10 as a common, which is stupid. Do not buy this card at $10. But uh, you get plus one mana. Uh, it's not very good on rates. It's, you know, you're just, you're wasting a card to get extra mana. That's kind of how mana acceleration works. But when you have a Ral in play or his uh, predecessor, Baral, Chief of Compliance, same concept, uh, it costs one red mana. So it's like a dark ritual for red. It's a bright ritual, but... We also have Desperate Ritual, which is another copy. The interesting thing is the Spice ability does come up, and it is really good. So you can pay two mana, reveal another one from your hand, and you get six mana instead of three. So incredibly good on rate. Uh, we also have Mana Morphos, which uh, does not net us any mana on its own, but if you have one of your Rowls or Barals, it does net you one mana, and it draws you a card, which is incredible. And then you basically do that a bunch until you get to the uh, main payoff card, Gifts Ungiven says, search your library for up to, up to four cards with 
different names. That doesn't really matter in this build, but in other decks, the up two does matter. And reveal them. Target opponent chooses two of the cards, and you put the chosen cards into the graveyard and the rest in your hand. So it's like a weird retake on factor fiction. Like you get a bunch of cards, and your opponent picks the ones you get effectively. And, uh, but since we're searching a library, we decide what those cards are. And there tends to be a pile called Old Faithful. And that pile includes a Past in Flames. You know, all your sources get flashback, and the card itself has flashback. And then one of each ritual, Manamorphose, Pyretic Ritual, and Desperate Ritual. It's four cards, and you want to set it up in a way where it doesn't really matter which two they put in the graveyard, because you're either going to cast Past in Flames from your hand and get a Luxury Man from the other ritual, or you'll flashback Past in Flames from the graveyard because they give you two rituals. And it's like, so it doesn't really matter what they do. Old Faithful. Uh, but there are some situations where you do other things. Maybe you get a couple of uh, high quality cards and an extra Gibson given. Um, sometimes, if you need a, uh, if you want to do it on their instep because Gibson given is an instant, you can grab one Ral, one Baral, and I also play one Case of the Ransacked Lab. It's a little harder to kill than Creature, but it is a little more expensive. Does the same thing on the uh, the first part and the last part. It can be like this quasi payoff card too if you solve the case. So that's pretty cool. We're also running two copies of Wish. That way our sideboard gives us a huge toolbox of options and one solve the equation. This can kind of be a fifth Gifts Ungiven. It can also be an extra Passive Flames, an extra Ritual. So I, I like playing it, but not too many of them. Another thing I like in this version of the build, besides the sort of uh, more level of consistency and going off in one big turn with Gifts Ungiven, is we can play a little bit of interaction with Remand. Remand does a lot of cool things in this deck. One is if you Remand one of their spells when you have a Brawl in play, you're drawing two cards and discarding one card, which is really good. But also, if your Storm count, you can't quite get up to 20 because Grape Shot only deals one damage, you can cast Grape Shot, Trigger Storm, so if you only have 10 or 9 or something, and then you can Remand the actual Grape Shot card back to your hand, the Trigger resolves, and then you get the 9 or 10 Storm damage, and then you can recast Grape Shot again for like 12 and then kill them. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then since we're playing blue, we also get to play some card selection with Sleight of Hand and Preordain, recent, uh, relatively recently unbanned card. Now, this my specific list that you may have seen is by no means complete. I had to build it in a little bit of a rush, so my wish board is really not that good. But a card I did find to help beat this card, the One Ring, which I'm also playing in the wish board because it would be a nice target in some cases, is when they One Ring you, you can't really kill them. You need to kill them in one big turn. Um, so the idea is you do your Storm turn, uh, even though you can't target them with gifts, that's an important thing about this. You can't do it with gifts. Do your storm term, and then you cast Empty the Warrants, which is usually like a backup plan. Make a bunch of tokens, and then you cast Alchemist's Gambit. This says you can take an extra turn, and during that turn, damage cannot be prevented. So when you take your extra turn, the token, the goblin tokens from Empty the Warrants no longer have summoning sickness, and you attack them. The damage from the protection is not prevented, and you win the game. So, uh, this didn't get to come up this time, but this was a cool thing I saw in the normal Ruby Storm lists. Uh, still rocking things like Blood Moon. And the main thing is the only thing I'm really siding in and out is Flame Slash over Remand if I need to kill creatures. Or uh, Giga Drowse just because I like this card. Um, it's supposed to like tap them down on their turn and they can't really counter it because it's got Replicate. And then you go into your turn and then you can win. It's meant to beat counter spells but, um, or removal. The problem is there's so much zero mana stuff, I don't know if this card is really playable anymore. And it didn't really come up here, but I'm going to go ahead and get right into the games. And if you're watching at this point point, you still haven't, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Okay, so going to start with being straightforward. My uh, round one opponent completely destroys me. Uh, it was a shaky matchup that I probably could have prepared for it a little better. It's very aggressive. Um... Mostly red, but I think it's like a slight is it prowess brew, and it just runs me over. Uh, fast decks can be a problem, especially if they can just kill my creatures. And this could be a part where uh, Ruby Storm might be a little better because it's hard to interact with artifacts and stuff like that. So, But then putting such a fast clock on me is a problem. Uh, and man, can uh, prowess can put an incredibly fast clock. But this first round is going to go by really fast. He won the die roll. He has one drop. Um now, this uh, Storm is capable of winning on turn two, but you have to have the perfect hand, basically. But it is possible. Ral, I think, does increase those odds just a little bit, because you really just need a bunch of rituals. Uh, you get to six spells, flip Ral, and Ral can help, help you in the game. Um, but either way, I'll go ahead and, and go through it. But it, it goes pretty fast. Um, he uh, plays Dude, plays another Dude, plays some spells, hits me for... a 
over two or three turns before I can untap and do a storm turn. And I think all I really do is like play two cantrips and die. So not much of a, a game here. I'll just play a little faster so you can see just how uh, <laughs> relatively uninteresting this first round is. So he gets a couple land drops, blah, blah, blah. So one thing I was uh, doing when I noticed the Gift Storm is I'm, I'm comparing it to Ruby Storm. And they both have their pros and cons. It's going to seem like Ruby Storm is the better deck, and maybe it is. One of the things is uh, there's a lot of ways to build Ruby Storm. Whether you play Amulet, we play Galvanic, or you know, uh, do you go heavier on energy? Do you play the new um, wheel card? A lot of options. Um, I do like the wheel card, by the way. But I, I don't know. I like Blue has this inevitability that's really cool, uh, a better consistency with its payoff card. But anyway, so yeah, he played a couple non-creature spells. He's going to be hitting me for what? One, two, three, four, five. Um, so taking five a turn would be plenty of time, but obviously uh, it's pretty obvious that, uh, you know, they're going to hit for a lot more than that. My hand looks like fine. I, I think what I'm missing is a reducer. And so I am um, digging. I got plenty of rituals. So if I get an opportunity, I can start going off. I have a couple rituals, a couple gifts. Uh land that's a lot of gifts and a remand so remand is a fine card but it's not particularly good against a one and zero mana spell deck so remand's definitely coming out in this one um yeah he's just like dude 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 and he's gonna play a bunch of spells here so he lava darts me which triggers two prowess and he has one two th he has instant sorcery land artifact so it looks like he does have delirium which is bad for me. So how much damage is this? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, no, he has 76, never mind. So yeah, basically he's just uh, running me over and I have to win this turn. Like I have to win this turn. He has plenty of resources to stop me or to kill me, rather. And I have, I'm look, like I'm looking at my hand. I'm like, okay, here are my rituals. I have a grape shot. And so I'm, I guess I'm wondering, maybe I can grape shot down his team. Um, which probably isn't grape shot. I have to get to it. Well, he has a lava dart, right? So now the prowess creatures have three toughness. The dragons are channeling only one toughness. Oh, that's so bad for me. Another haste creature. Yeah, I'm just, I'm dead. Very dead. So here in game number two, um, I just take out three mans, bring in flame slashes should hopefully buy me time. Uh, that's at least the logic. Just going to get through this round because it was not very interesting, to be honest. I don't think I did anything interesting. I'm pretty sure this game I just killed a couple guys, and uh, that was it. So he's like, dude, maybe I kill it. He's like, another dude, and another dude. And I killed one, and he plays another dude, and plays a bunch of spells. They get really big. Slick shot show off gets big really fast. Definitely a, more of a kiln fiend kind of card. Um, but that's not to disparage the deck. You know, I, My opponent played very well, won the die roll. The cards lined up well. Matchup's not super great. Um... Storm can run over like big mana decks that are a little slower, uh, mid range decks. That that's what I want to play against your normal fair decks. Other combo decks that also don't interact that are a turn slower. Storm's also pretty good against. So that's one, two, three, four, five damage. Pretty good for our opponent. And decides to follow me. Looks like he revealed a Baral. It's like no one's seen this card in a while. <laughs> so what I've got, I've got. Uh, Slide hand at Brawl. I, the Brawl I drew. There's a Flame Slash and a Remand. I can only keep one of those. No, that's no, not a Remand. It's a Preordain. But I can only keep one of the cards. So I keep the Flame Slash because I just need as much time as I can. So I kill this guy. He's like, okay, guy's dead. And uh, in this case, I'd probably be feeling pretty good. I'm going to turn ahead of him because I went first. Um, he has no creatures. Uh, but I'm still overall not feeling super great. I think I, I only have a one Pyretic. We'll say my hand is one Pyretic, a Flame Slash, which is good. Uh, Manamorphose, a Baral, and no payoff card. Grape Shot is... Oh, maybe there's two Pyretic. Grape Shot is not... Okay, so here's another thing. Plot is so good. It is such an amazing mechanic, both on power level and just gameplay sequencing choices. Because now all my sorcery speed removal is kind of bad. And he's going to have a bunch of mana to just b probably one-shot me with this slick shot. So I play Brawl. Yeah, you know, I could be representing a cool remand here, but I, I did take them out. 
Although it wouldn't be amazing here. I might just be dead. Spell number one, so that's plus two. So, how many spells does he need to kill me? So, two, four, six, eight, ten. He effectively needs five, unless one of them's a burn spell, then maybe four. Yeah, I think... So, if it's like bolts, lava dart, or double lava dart, that'd probably do it, right? Double lava dart is um, four spells on its own, preordains five, plus four damage from the lava darts. Uh-oh, does he have it? Okay, that's one. That's bad for me. Oh, bolts. Okay, so he's lava dart bolts. So that's six, seven, dart. Yeah, I think that's just lethal. <laughs> hey, I'm just dead. Eight, nine, ten, and I'm at eight. So, uh, all right. So I just get totally ran over. Okay, round number two, I am on the play, which is nice. And I have no cantrip, which I'm not a fan of, but that seems to suggest maybe my hand's like pretty good. Um, I don't remember if I mulliganed. I think I did actually. No, I'm not so sure. For the most part, well, okay, let me start over. So one of the, I'm not really a storm player. I'm not a super experienced, super good at playing storm, even though I do enjoy it. Um, but storm is relatively hard to pilot. It's got a lot of complicated lines. So I do have a preordain in my hand. I must have drawn the preordain for turn, and now I must have reman if I'm leaving up two mana. But uh, mulliganing is one of the hardest parts of the deck, and knowing when to go for the storm turn when it's not just the straightforward, obvious, I, I've, here's my stuff, I win. Uh, so that's one of the more complicated things. So if you have like ritual, ritual, ritual thing, cantrip, do you keep it? Do you mulligan to parole? Do you try to save resources and use your cantrips? It, it's not always so simple, and that's definitely the part I struggle with. But, uh, you know, without my opponent playing turn one hasty prowess creatures, um, I'm feeling a little better about it. I think I think this is also the opponent. Yeah, this is the opponent I played last week. He's probably on a very similar build. Hope so, in one sense, because he's definitely a slower clock. But there's also more interaction that's harder to play around. So, we'll see. Prismatic, Prismatic Ending can be pretty good against my deck, unless I'm going off in one big turn, which I'll have a better chance of doing, since uh, he won't be putting on such a fast clock. I can wait till I have like four or five lands. Stoneforge Mystic. Well, I can basically just time walk him. And remand like this is quite awesome. Now, I do have to be a little careful about this Urza Saga, because if there's any chance he has a main board like Graveyard Hate card, I have to be aware of that if I decide to go get past Flames. Hopefully, if I only do that in a, in a situation where I'm going off in one turn and you didn't see it coming. I guess technically my opponent isn't 100% sure what I'm doing, right? Because the Storm decks right now are Ruby Storm, Mono Red. I have Case of the Ransack Lab which is a fine card here. If I were to just run out a bunch of spells like Rituals into Lab and I have to pass to solve it, my opponent could just Prismatic Ending and I just like wasted all my resources. So I don't think that's a good idea. It looks like this Preordained found a Baral though and I ha also have a gift. So I have two Rituals and a gift. I think I need one more Ritual to really... Usually it's you need uh, like two three mana Rituals and one or three and one... Um, Manamorphose plus gifts to be like deterministic. Because that's like enough mana at discounted rate to be able to flash back the past flames, flash all the spells back, flash back another gift, do it again, and then you just do it until you grape shot them. That's the like original gift storm line when you have like a pyromancer or brawl in play. Looks like I have another remand, or I'm at least pretending I have remand. See, I don't... Yeah, I do. I do have Reman in my hand. So I can just Reman another play he makes here, which would be cool. Okay, it looks like he's just passing with Urza Saga activation up. Again, he doesn't know what I'm up to, so he doesn't know to try to, you know, do things. But I could still lose to a Solitude, which is bad. So if I go, like, Baral and then go play Ritual, and he just goes Solitude to Baral, I'm like, well... You got me. Zero mana spells at instant speed are hard to play around. <laughs> so that is kind of the nature of the game at the moment. So it looks like I just passed again. 
and I didn't hit a land drop or any I didn't hit a land drop or any cantrips. The cool thing here is with three mana, you could it, with one ritual, you could still gifts on their instep and fill up two extra cards. I think that's what I'm trying to do here. As much as I could, I don't have a mana morphos, so I can't really go like Baral into ritual, ritual, uh, gifts ungiven, because I don't have mana morphos to make blue. So I can't do that line. Plus, if I run Baral out and don't try to win this turn, then I'm, I open myself up to Prismatic Ending, and he can also blow me out if he, oh, never mind. I guess I am doing a thing. So I guess he decided to make the Construct token on my upkeep for some reason. I did, the last time I played against him, I did have um, ice, fire ice. I'm not sure that really makes a difference. So I'm not, I'm not entirely sure why he did it. But either way, so it looks like he's deciding to go with mana before chapter three sacrifices it instead of the construct token, probably because he wants to redeploy his Stoneforge Mystic and have enough mana to deal with my Brawl. That's what I'm gonna assume. I'm not really exactly remember here. Ooh, the new Jitte. I remember Jitte being able to untap lands as something you always have to factor for. And it's not something I was super great at doing when it would go off like that. Um, still unsure what I think about the card. I would say the, the main power level of the card is the fact that it's one man and you can find it off in Urza Saga. I would say that's the main thing it's got going for it. Uh, but its abilities I don't think are quite at the level of Umazawa Jitte, but yeah, I, I bet they could unban that card, right? I guess creatures are already struggling enough between Bowmasters and Renin Six, and you know, small creatures are already struggling enough. All right, so he does have Prismatic Ending. He equips with the floating mana. Okay, so I, re I decided to remand. I get to draw two cards, which is actually pretty sweet. Um, I'm not sure at this. Uh, yeah, I have that case. And I'm, I don't know if I would keep the case. Oh, I have a wish and I have three rituals and a grape shot. And a, so I've got a lot, I've like had a lot of gas, but it's a little awkward. I discarded the case. I'm not certain that that's correct. Now I only have three lands. So if I have to go case pass, that's kind of, eh. All right. So here's what I didn't account for. He hit, it only has to deal combat damage. It doesn't have to deal combat damage to a player. So he hits me, untaps a land, and now I can just binding again. And so I'm like, oh, I kind of wish I didn't discard the case. <laughs> All right, so I find another ritual. And now I've got to make some decisions. Because I uh, don't have a discount. I don't know, think I have a deterministic line, even though I have a lot of gas. The bigger problem, well, I don't know if I'd say it's a bigger problem. The good news is that he does not have me on that much of a clock. He's got a 2-2. And only three mana. He can maybe have four mana. So that's the main thing that's good. But I don't really have card selection. So uh, I could do the gifts plan. I could just try to go for it. If I try to go for it, I'm going to bottleneck myself on blue mana pretty fast. And I only go up one mana per ritual, which is not very much. So I could go like maybe Pyretic, Pyretic, Splice. Go to six. So what do I do with six red? Six red and a blue. I could spend four of it. On gifts, he puts past and flames in my graveyard. Gives me, yeah, I'm not sure that's good. Oh, I guess I'm going for it. Actually, I'm not sure what I'm doing. Now, it looks like I just passed the turn. I think I'm setting up the end of your turn ritual gifts because I don't draw the fourth land. It is possible I'm playing too few lands. I'll, I'll admit that. I have, I have a total of 18 land, including the two MDFCs. So that might be too few, but you know, you've got four preordained, four sleight of hand. Uh, and you only really need about two or three lanes to operate. Uh, although drawing a few more in the board stall games going long, it's not a bad thing. So uh my opponent is definitely thinking about hey, okay, I don't what what can I do to not just straight die in one turn? And when you're playing Naya Colors, not like a whole lot you can do, but he does know that I have to go off with creature and play most of the time. And, uh, or a Ruby medallion, you know, he doesn't know for sure. I'm not playing something like that. And so he's probably thinking, okay, how do I apply pressure, but also have answers and interaction and deny resources, you know, a, a typical, I'm the beatdown plan. And, uh, it definitely depends on what he has. You know, if he has a way to kill a creature, that's definitely good. So if it's like a lightning bolts or an unholy heat, 
then he would want to leave a red up. If it's Sol 2, keep a white card in your hand. Sol 2 definitely gives you a lot more flexibility with your mana, which is pretty awesome. He has a lot of cards in his hand, like six. And he can redeploy his Stoneforge, which it looks like he's about to do. I don't know. Let's see, Stoneforge can put a hasty guy in my hand. But, or, or put a hasty guy in his hand, but, you know, five damage, that's still like three, four turns. Yeah, let's say three turns, because he has the, he has the token. But I get at least one more turn of not having to deal with it, so that's, that's pretty good. Oh, uh, okay, I think he's, he must be aware of this, like, okay, I can't deploy this now, so I gotta... He realizes he has to beat me down. Like, there's just no other choice. Like, if he doesn't put the beat down on me, then the more time he gives me, I'll just, I'll find a deterministic kill and he just can't do much about it. The thing I'm not certain of is whether or not Ruby Storm in any of its versions have the capacity to combo kill in a single turn without a discount without a Ruby Medallion or a Brawl. Or sorry, a uh, Rowl. I don't know that they can do it. I suppose if they have the right number of cards and they go Ritual, 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 Pass and Flames, if they're doing that, and then they do it all again, and they draw a Grape Shot, I guess they could do it. I haven't seen it happen yet. Now, the deck is still pretty new, so that doesn't really mean anything. But uh, that is a line that old gift storm could do it on occasion by setting up enough things in your hand and you just didn't have to worry about it but it looks like i am going to do the play i mentioned i'm just going to end the turn i do have to burn a ritual but gifts puts me up uh, two ish cards but you know with uh pass and flames it doesn't really matter as long as i have enough rituals to get there looks like i'm gonna set up old faithful i'm not sure anyone has done this reasonably since 2019 right after the modern horizon one era and when you're looking at old faithful it's never super obvious what you give them in my opinion especially when there's no brawl play i would give manamorphose pass and flames put the two three mana rituals in the graveyard that's what i would do there's not a great if i'm stacking if i have a bunch of three rituals in my hand it doesn't it doesn't matter. And that's why the idea is good. You want to build your deck around a gifts and given card where all choices are bad. But the uh, an old combo I like, which I don't know if it's powerful enough in modern anymore, is you can choose to only get two cards and they have to put them in the graveyard. So it's like a four mana instant speed in tomb for two cards. And you put in a giant creature and a um, on burial rites. Untap onto your turn, cast some burial rites for your big creature. That's a really cool combo that I still like. Um, I have some brews around it. Not sure if it's quite good enough for current modern. Looks like I'm going to go for it. So, uh, the, uh, island at the top represents floating blue mana. The storm crow token represents the storm count. And obviously the mountain you see at the top represents how much floating red mana I have. So I cast a pyretic ritual up to three. I then go down to one red, cast another pyre ritual, pyretic go up to four red. So, there's going to be a lot of this long storm turn, and it's not obviously deterministic, so my opponent doesn't just scoop. He's like, okay, i got to see it. The downside with playing storm and playing against storm is it's one long, term, one long turn a lot of the time, and that doesn't make for the greatest gameplay experience. So when you combine that with high consistency and early kills, storm has been the target for a lot of bands. We've seen Seething Song ban. We've seen Rite of Flame ban. Probably the two high and low and most efficient rituals. Uh, what else have we seen banned? There might be, oh, I guess like Ponder along, Ponder like enabled and preordained for a while, enabled a lot of combo decks, including Storm. And I think Storm was the primary reason they got banned too. Other than that, I'm not sure if there's another Stormy card on the ban list. I, I can't remember. But we do have preordained back now. Um, so here I'm using all four of my red mana and I'm splicing. So I go to six and I get to keep an extra ritual in my hand. Uh, that only increases the storm count by one, though. Now, this Manamorphose adds to my storm count effectively for zero mana, 
So it doesn't net me any mana, but it does allow me to make blue. And blue allows me to do gifts and given if I need to, but it's not clear that I'm going to need to. So I have four red, two blue, and an extra red or blue if I want to use that land. The Past and Flames in the graveyard costs five mana. And I think I drew a Past and Flames and forgot that it was in my hand. Yeah, I see the Past and Flames right there. So I drew a Past and Flames, but I decided to flash back the one in the graveyard anyway. So I basically waste a mana, which is not good. So if I spend all the way down to one red here, I'll still have a floating red plus my land to start the two mana ritual train again. I think that should be pretty good, actually. That should be good enough to win. So, yeah, being able to deterministically find, sorry, not deterministically, consistently finding with searchable things like a Gifts Ungiven into your Passive Flames or whatever you need to go off is one of the things I like about the original version. And now we get to just add Ral and the deck's power level just goes far up. But Ruby Medallion is a t uh, and Ruby Storm is a totally new type of Storm deck. And um, it's got the hype with the new card, so more people are going to play it. So it's not clear to me which Storm deck is better. But I wanted to try this because I haven't really seen one try it yet. Uh, so I do all the same things. Um, now I'm at, that's a 7, by the way. So I'm up to 7 mana. did the splice thing again. And it looks like I'm going to do it again again. So I'm going to go up 2 to 9. And that's a lot. 9 floating red, it should be enough mana to pack this in. I've got that uh, remand in my graveyard. I have a grape shot in my hand. Oh. <laughs> Video file was too long. I had to split into two. But yeah, I have nine floating red mana. I have grape shot in my hand. I have remand in my hand. And I have another ritual in my hand. So it looks like I'm just going to filter blue. So I go down to seven red and two blue. My hand is grape shot, wish, gifts. Okay, so I'm casting the, the last Desperate Ritual from a hand, which currently does not have flashback because it was not in the graveyard when I activated or when I cast my Pass Flames. So what I'm doing here is I'm casting uh, I'm casting the Grape Shot, and I'm going to reman the Grape Shot and cast it again. So that's going to be like 20-something damage. So my opponent scoops up his cards because he doesn't really have a way to interact with me on the stack. Okay, so this game we're starting off in on turn two because I guess I forgot to hit record. <laughs> <laughs> Billy me. So, I have a turn to uh, Ral, which is uh, basically like kill on sight or you die. <laughs> that's that's the way you need to treat the card. It's not guaranteed you will always die, but you can't take that chance. It looks like my opponent is well aware of that. And he's like, um, no, get that out of here. He played a Stoneforge Mystic, and I think he got a Cauldra Complete, so he's trying to put a clock on me. Ha hopefully has some hate cards in. My hand is Ritual, Wish, Odawara... Uh, I can't, what's that can trip? I think it's a sleight of hand and some other blue cards I can catch. I think it's the case again. Oh, the two gifts and givens. Desperate ritual, mana morphos. So my hand's kind of not that good. Um, I don't imagine, actually, I don't know. I don't imagine that I brought in flame slash against him. I guess I'm in the tank here. I'm like, is there like a wish card that is like super awesome? I don't know. Even like the One Ring, which could buy me a lot of time, draw me a lot of cards, is not super great against like Leyline Bindings and Prismatic Endings. Yeah, it's like, like even going in the tank because of how complex the deck is, how the different options I have, it's it's uh, not easy. So try not to play too slowly. I decide to just go land pass. Maybe I'll do the same thing as last game, set up another Storm or uh, end of turn gifts. But getting Old Faithful here, given how low I'm already on the Rituals, is not super obvious. Okay, so there's Prismatic Ending, Culture Complete, Temple Garden, another card I can't quite tell. So Hand looks relatively similar to last game, but now it's post-board, so his Urza Saga almost certainly will have a, uh, a hate piece here. Could be a Cage. Oh, he's looking at a Relic. Considering a relic. The problem with relic is you do have to leave up in one mana, which um, will slow down his board production to put a faster clock on me. So I don't think that's what he wants to do. Yep, he went past the relic. Consults his hand again. Yeah, this uh, these single gameplay sequences and decisions with simple things like you know, use my fetch land, look at my hand with cantrip, make a decision. 
a single line of decision, even in the early on the third turn of the game, can take a while the more the card pool grows in your format and the more complexity on the cards there are, which is complexity creep is also a thing along with power creep. Looks like he decides a soul guide lantern and says, you are not going to be able to win with your passive flames. So he cuts off that entire avenue of my deck and situations like this, which are, of course, you need to expect hate cards when you play a combo deck. So situations like this are what make cards like wish and gifts and given good. In my opinion, uh, they give you a lot more flexibility in your, choices on navigating through hate pieces and interaction but there's culture complete he is gonna start smacking me which i don't like even a little bit not a lot i can do about it though tap land okay so he's leaving open a forest i don't think that really represents anything i guess it could represent a oh if he has veil of summer here that would that would be bad that would just counter because you do the, the word target appears like midway through the text on gifts and given, but you do have to have an opponent to target. So if they have hexproof, like from a ley line of sanctity, you just can't cast it. If they give themselves hexproof, then the spell's countered. So Veil Summer would totally beat me here, but it looks like he does not have it. So I'm just doing the same thing as last time. But it looks like this time I decide to get a different package. I get a Ral, a Baral, a Case, and a MDFC Stupor. So that kind of represents a land for me if I need it to be, or an interactive spell. So that's good. Oh, I don't know this 100% certain I didn't actually look, but it looks like, as I'm looking at it now, if I were to just not play it, sink into stupor, or, yes, stupor. If I didn't play that single card and played something else, a land or a different MDFC, I could have put Gigantha as my companion. And I'm starting to think that would have been better think that would be better because I can actually use a lot of the mana and like I can use green for mana morphos. I can use blue. I can use red and just putting it on a blocker or, you know, if we're all out of resources, you can attack. That's probably better than the occasional usefulness of sink into stupors. So if you were wanting to play a very similar list to this, I would consider that swap. I would, I think that would be correct. So it looks like he binned Case and Sink into Stupor. And I drew, I find a land, so that's nice. So I could run both out, both of my guys out and hope he only has one removal spell. So that is an option. It looks like that's what I do. I think that makes sense. Um, the other option was, do I go for it now? But I did not have nearly enough. I basically just have a, um, a Manamorphos in my hand. That is not nearly enough. But hopefully my opponent has, a, oh, looks like he has a another Urza Saga and two Prismatic Endings. That is not good for me. So uh, kind of, uh, I, I don't want to say it's weird. So this is a very different style of magic gameplay. So I'm not like out of gas. I've got spells in my hand that do things but storm is not quite a glass cannon but it kind of is where it's like you have to have a lot of different pieces at the same time to work so even though i have a gifts and given good card i'm under i am definitely under pressure. i have one turn <laughs> but it looks like uh maybe i was wrong he didn't have maybe it wasn't too prismatic ending hmm so i find past some flames and tap the land and I have to win this turn. So both of these cards are just a blank. So I'm like, well, I guess I'll, I guess I'll take passive flames. Uh, so I have to go for it and I have three mana. I find a desperate ritual, which is good. I have a gifts and given. I mean, my hand would normally be really good here and probably enough to win if that dang soul guide lantern wasn't in play. I really thought he had two prismat. Oh, he did, but his land came into play tap. Ooh, and I think I remember telling him, he's like, I, I didn't play my land last turn. Wait. Hmm. So, but he has an Urza Saga. He could have played that, right? See, so yeah, I'm sitting here thinking through my long turn. I'm looking at my sideboard to say, yeah, is there anything Wish can get me here? Is there any, like, is there any way for me to win this game? Because I've definitely, like, with Soul Guide Lantern, I don't have that, like, for sure I'll eventually get there with Pass and Flames. I have to kind of just hope I find something. 
so I do, I remember him telling me, oh, you know, I didn't play this uh, tri Triome or Triland last turn, so I thought maybe I'd cycle it. And so if he would play last turn, he'd have four mana. But he has, he has an Urza Saga. So am I missing something? Is there a reason he couldn't play the Urza Saga? I don't know. I don't know. There might be something I'm missing, but um, if he would have killed both my creatures, I think I just didn't have a way to win. I basically would have had to expend a bunch of resources this turn on taking out his token so I don't die. And that's not even a, a sure thing, but that would probably be the best I have. All right, so I have uh, two mana. And I preordained. This should put me at four. Okay, so I'm going for it, but there's not a for sure win here. Oh, it looks like preordained found me a Ral. Ral is pretty good. I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, well, I've played four spells. Of the four spells, hmm. Did I play four spells? Or am I about to play the fourth spell? Because you need six instant or sorceries to ultimate the Rowl. So I played Preordained Manamorphos. I didn't play Sleight of Hand, did I? I'm pointing at it. Hey, I think I lost track of my storm count. Did I play Slide of Hand? Oh, it looks like I did. So I went Slide of Hand Preordain. Okay, so I've played four instant sorceries. So my total uh, storm count is five. This will be six. So that triggers Ral. I have one red floating. No, oh, I, I have an untapped blue, so that, that's good. So I have two F, I have two up mana. And we're deciding how what's, you know, Heads or Tails uh, even odd. So basically I say you call... You call what well, I take a damage. Looks like he called either. So he won that flip, which is not good for me. Um, wish resolves. I'm sitting here looking at my sideboard. I'm like, is there even anything here that, that helps? Taking an extra turn would be actually pretty good here. Wow. Do I not do that? He clearly doesn't have a removal spell. Okay, so I'm sitting here looking at Gambit. And it would only cost red red, which I have. And that would totally do it, right? That should give me plenty of uh, opportunities to flip Ral. I guess my maybe I'm thinking like, I need to win now while I have six storm. I built up six storm. But I have like a gifts in my hand, don't I? Okay, I guess I'm, I'm playing the safe route. So I'm taking out his token, but this gives me another Ral flip. So I, I don't do it, but I'm using that untapped steam vents there, but... Um, oh, I'm shake. Oh, I think I won. We did it, boys. We did it. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. So we got a reader, new Modern Horizons three card. He'll come in actually with. Um, wait, is it? that can't only be six, right? So wish, echoing truth, desperate ritual, preordained manamorpho. Oh, that is six. So if I would have won the flip, I actually probably would have declined it because he, he has a. He would only have he would have only had seven loyalty. So it looks like he has eight. I'm just saying, okay, I'm gonna ultimate it now. So I'm gonna exile the top eight. And I think he's my opponent's telling me he's like, oh, I'm dead. By the way, that steam vent's supposed to be tapped. I just didn't tap it, but I'm supposed to be dead. And I'm like, well, I have to get a little lucky. If I just hit a bunch of lands and rowls, I okay, let's see, uh, Pass Flame's not good, Grape Shot's good, Gifts is actually pretty good. I cast it for free. Remand. Okay. That's actually already enough to win the game. So I get I can play a couple rituals of the gifts, and then I can play Grape shot remand. Grape shot again. So plenty of damage here. So we actually managed to win both games in, well, I guess I shouldn't say that. The first game I won with no cost reducer, which is actually pretty awesome. It was through Gifts and Given and Passive Flames. This game, I got to showcase Ral. Ral basically just comes down, flips, and then he dies. So uh, I will see you for the last round. Okay, here in the final round, my opponent is once again playing... Prowess, very popular, aggressive deck to play in an early format. A lot of Wild West combos, big mana, and aggressive. So I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Uh, I do believe my opponent is kind of newer, returning to modern. They've been playing a lot of commanders, so he almost like drew a card on his, he, went, he won the die roll. I'm like, oh, nope, not commander. Um, I do believe my opponent will miss uh, some like triggers, surveil triggers and stuff. So just keep that in mind. Um, I don't like remind him each time, but like later I'm like, hey, you've been missing your spell trigger. He's like, oh, oh, thank you. So that does come up, but I do think my opponent has the superior deck. So that doesn't 
put me off the hook. You know, he plotted a, if you can see it there on the corner, plotted a uh, slick shot. So I'm like, I mean, uh, I am. <laughs> I'm in danger. Very much in danger. So slick shot will kill me very quickly. If not, the turn it comes down. I don't think any of them were playing like assault strobes or anything like that. So I don't have to worry about the double strike necessarily, but yeah, you know, they can play so many spells, so many zero mana spells. I'm not sure I would have to. So clearly representing a remand. If I did remand, oh, oh Lord, have mercy. Second plotted slick shot. I probably just can't win, right? Like I, I just can't win. So bottom right corner there, there's two slick shot show offs. They are plotted, which means next turn, if he so chooses, he could put two hasty double prowess flying creatures into play for zero mana. And then he has all his mana to invest in prowess triggers. So probably just dead. Unless somehow I can go off right now. So uh, usually that would be a sweet, but it looks like I do not have enough rituals. I have a land and a like a remand and another Baral. Ooh, is that two other Baral's? Not the best hand. Perhaps I should have Mulligan. I have no cantrips either. Hoping this remand gets me there. Remand can like slow him down a little, but not really stop him. Honestly, if I were him and I go like slick shot and I remand it, I'd probably just like let that happen, play the other slick shot for zero and just go off the one and see if I can win. If there's enough cards in his hand there, just kill me. So it looks like we have plot number one. It looks like I am going to remand it and he lets it happen. So I get to draw and loot. See, Baral still has some relevant text. Oof. Okay. Finally found a ritual still not really enough. I'm at 19 though. So not like just dead. So it looks like I get rid of the case, probably because I have a bunch of extra brawls in my hand. And I don't have time for case. Case is like it as a one of if the you know if it's a lot of slinging resources. Enchantments are generally the most resilient permanent other than a land. So if I resolve an enchantment against my opponent, I don't think they can deal with it. Okay, so the opponent did not go my line. He just recasts the one from his hand and kills the brawl, which is good. Um, because it taxes my mana, basically I have to cast another one. And that's going to be uh, three, six, seven, right? So he, he missed the surveil trigger and he asked if he could do it. I said, that's fine. So um, <laughs> and he hit a lava dart, which is not fine for me. Kind of digging my own grave there. But I'd rather put my opponent plays deck correctly if, you know, because that's how the game should be going. So he uses it, which is a lot more damage. That's an extra four. So it was three. It was three, four, five, then a six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I'm at seven. Actually, I think it's more than ten. So four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So he hit me for twelve. That's a lot of damage. So I've got a brawl. I've got some rituals, so I can like go for it, but I don't think I quite have enough resources to win. I need two rituals. And that looks like looks like I only have one. So I know I'm dead next turn, right? So I guess that's how I'm I'm like, hey, I gotta start it. Gotta do my best. So what I guess I go red blue because I have no other mana. But I haven't played the land, so if I draw into land, that gives me an extra mana. Alright, two storm. Okay, I, I that's that's an okay draw. Do I do that first? I guess I do. So I cast Slide of Hand. Probably just want more rituals. I find a Rowl and a land, but the land comes in tap, so yeah, I just take the Rowl. I don't know if I can cast the Rowl, though. If I pass the turn, I am for sure dead. So I can't really afford to do that. I've played two instant or sorcery spells, right? Yeah. Alright, that's three instant or sorcery spells. Don't know if I can win this. I really need it. Oh, I have another Metamorphose. Okay, that's pretty good. Ral will also make the three mana cards one mana instead of just two. Oh, and I have a land. Okay, okay. So I'm feeling a little better. Um, kind of forgot about all that. So I'm feeling a little better about this turn. Go to one red, cast Baral. 
Oh, sorry, Ral. Ral Brawl are like the same slot in the deck. So I've cast one, two, three. That's four instant or sorceries. My question is, would I want to flip Ral if I, even though I can't ultimate him? Because if I flip him, I could maybe kill one of the slick shots, draw a card, and then keep trying to storm off. Maybe, I suppose. I, okay, so he's calling it. Looks like I lost the flip already. I have Wish and Solve the Equation. Those are my cards. Two red. Interesting. Okay, I find a Remand, which is not really a good draw here. Oh, I still have a Polluted Delta. That's why I made two red. Okay, the world makes sense again. So I could go Wish, Grape Shot, Counter, and then I'm one short from Grape Shotting again. So Grape Shot could mow down his team, which... Hmm. Oh, it looks like I'm casting Solve the Equation. What do I get with Solve? Do I get a Manamorphose, I guess? I lost the flip again. One, two, three, four, five. So that was five, so it still wouldn't have ultimated even if I won. I'm getting a little low. I'm getting to a point where if I go to three life and all I do is kill his team and pass, I could still die to like any burn spell, except for I guess Lava Dart. So it's re <laughs> I look at my hand like three times. It's Reman and Wish. It, it did not change the other two times. So it looks like, yeah, Manamorphose is not as much mana, but it is um, an extra card that might help me get another look at or get another flip for Ral. If I can if I can ultimate Ral, I maybe can just go for the win. Especially if I can ultimate in here before I use Wish. That's my thought process. I think my opponent has two or three cards in their hand. They're just sitting patiently watching me do my storm stuff. So I cast a Morphos and trigger Ral again. Was that three losses in a row? Four losses in a row. Wow. That's crazy. It was either three or four in a row. I don't know. But I definitely just keep going. So uh, should I be at two red? I'm getting to the point where my life total is like, I have to flip Rowl no matter what, or I'm dead. Oh, I lost again. Well, that's like five or six in a row. That is crazy. Yeah, I put both on the bottom. Not good cards. I think I'm supposed to be a two red. There's another Rowl. I think I'm supposed to be a two red. I, I don't know. So if I'm at two red... Was I at one red floating? I thought it was at two. I don't know. I'm not going to rewind it. So I don't think it matters. Because it really just comes down to the route flipping. Wow. That's either like six or seven in a row that I lost. Which is statistically a thing that could happen. So Wish can't really do anything. Because I'm saying I have no mana. Now if I'm wrong about that. And I actually do have an extra mana. I could grape shot his team down. I guess that's what I'm saying. Did I mess that up? I'm kind of curious. So here's great. Uh, so, yeah, I was supposed to have. Uh, I only added one mana, and um, so it's at two. So I actually did have an extra red there. Wow. Funny thing is, I ended up conceding because I thought I was out of mana. But if I would have cast Grape Shot and lost the flip, I'd die. <laughs> so, anyway, we'll go to the game two. Okay, I'm on the play, and I start with the Shock Preordain. You know, Storm is a long, complicated deck to do on the Storm turn, so I'm going to play this faster. Uh, I don't want you guys to have to sit down and watch slow stuff. So, uh, yeah, my opponent has a turn one creature. Pretty good. Uh, normal early game starts. Nothing out of the huge. Uh, if I have the Brawl here, do I just jam it, or do I kill his creature? Not entirely sure. So it looks like I'm just sculpting my hand for now, which is good for me. See, a one turn difference is huge. Oof. Look, is that a wish? Yeah, wish not super good there. So it looks like I'm not that scared of his... Uh... Yeah, I'm not that scared of his Dragon's Rage Channeler. I'm just like, eh. Not that I had a... Do I have a Flame Slash? Yes, I do have a Flame Slash. 
My opponent also casts in Preordain. Preordain is a very strong magic card. I'm glad it is in modern so it gets to see some play because it only really saw play in like super linear blue combo decks in Legacy. And they they sub access to Ponder and Brainstorm. So it's like there wasn't a format where Preordain was the premier card selection card and now it is. And it still doesn't honestly see that much play in modern. Um, it does see play. It definitely sees a reasonable amount of play, as you can tell here. But this isn't super representative of the metagame as a whole. Decks that are playing blue. Let me think. Decks that are playing blue that are in the top. Do they play preordain? Like blue is a main color. Yeah, I guess Murktide is still kind of around. Now they're playing Vert Polarity. They still play preordain. So, all right, all right. So it's season play, but it's not like. Um, it's not like all over the place by any means. I actually think I, I might have been able to win uh, that game. I had a remand in my hand, so I actually might have had enough to go grape shot, remand, grape shot. I would have had to, I would have had to win the flip or I just die, but I at least could have done that. I just didn't add the extra red mana. I didn't notice it. Little mistakes like that are definitely the difference between a win and a loss. So I shock in a fourth on tap land, which means, or it should be pretty obvious that I'm holding up a Gifts and Given. I'm just going to cast it on its instep. Uh, see, I have at least one Desperate Ritual in my hand. I think I made a Morphos. Let me see. Oh, another land. Flame Slash, which I am being quite patient with. My opponent has land, instant sorcery. So not much of a clock, but I have dealt a lot of damage to myself. I don't know. I, I, I picked Flame Slash... I'm not sure it was. I mean, it is a sorcery, but it kills Nadu. And it's kind of the best rate, but being a sorcery is kind of bad. So he should be able to get Delirium here, which is going to quite increase the clock. Yeah, I think he missed Surveil again. Ask if he could do it. He's been missing Surveil. Um, I d did let him. Basically, if he asked me if he can do it, I'd say yes, as long as it didn't, he didn't see new information. That would have changed materially changed anything. So he peeks at my top card. He's going to be able to hit me for three. I wonder if he's deciding if he wants to... If he has another prowess creature, I guess not. So I cast Gifts and Given. Maybe he's holding up counter spells, and he's being patient, because this would be tempting to counter. The question is, what do I get here? Do I just get Old Faithful? It looks like I do. Ritual, 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 Passive Flames. I'm calling Manamorphos Ritual, even though Ritual is not in the name. So I think he does the exact wrong thing, gives me the, no, no, he does the right thing. He puts the big rituals in the yard. So, okay. I actually think my opponent was smart here by showing patience with uh, not um, countering that. That was good for my opponent because now he can save that for countering something else. Uh, definitely going to go for it here, though, because I have a lot of stuff in my hand. So he casts Unholy Heat in response to my ritual. So here I could either put a bunch of rituals on the stack or I could try to remand that because he only has an island open. So he can't recast the heat. Ooh, interesting. So I think my opponent does have something here, which is kind of bad for me no matter what. Dismember. Okay, so now he does have a removal spell. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to get to make four total mana. And I get to count his spells for Storm 2. So there's been five spells. So I draw, and then I make more mana. But do I have anything to do with it? Okay, just make sure I have the storm count right. So I don't think I'm going to be able to com com continue storming this turn. So I could just kill this creature. I could spend my mana on another reinvestment. I could have remanded that... Um, Metamorphos on the stack. That would have been interesting. So I decide to cast Silundi Vision. Am I pronouncing that right? Silundi Vision. Yeah. So it's a tap land in BSC blue for three, two, for two in a blue, three total. Yeah. So I decide to fizzle. I can look at the top six, put in sorcery in my hand. Not bad. I think I found a ritual. Sorry, I got a little distracted there. Oof. This, this is bad for me. So I am at one life. That is not zero. It is not zero. But Ral is a scary card that I probably should be careful playing. 
All right, so um, what am I going to do here? So I'm paying four mana. It looks like I'm going to do a spliced six, which is pretty cool. So six red. If I have access to passive flames, I think I actually might be able to win this. Yeah, I like that. So I have plenty of goodies in my graveyard. Is this going to be another no reducer storm? My opponent, I think, has no cards in his hand. So it should be good. My... <laughs> Throw me off winning at one life. That's just straight disrespect. Pretty interesting stuff, though. That Ral missing six or seven in a row is insane. Kind of cool that I captured it on camera, though. So I got one awesome Ral flip wins the game. I got one Ral dud that who loses that many? My opponent was kind of smart. He was like, he kept like switching even odd on me. It was pretty interesting. He's like, he's like odd, odd, or even, even, or something in a row. And he's like, oh, now it's odd. And I roll odd. It's like, dang it. So that's pretty fun. I seem to have a lot of resources. There's a Baral. Baral is pretty good. At this point, I don't know if I need him, though, but it looks like I keep him on top. So that Pyretic from my hand does not have flashback. You need to keep that in mind. So Baral gifts. Do I take what I take? Did I take the gifts? I hope I didn't. No, I don't think that's right. No, I took the Baral. Because there's Slony Vision stuff in my graveyard. Gifts. Interesting. So I, I still have a Pass Flames in my graveyard. So what am I getting? I didn't catch all that. Oh, Grape Shot. So it's like Old Faithful plus Grape Shot? Yeah. So Old Faithful, Grape Shot. So I can like recast Pyretic. Or uh, Pass and Flames. Yeah, yeah, this is, he's definitely dead. So the video ran out of time there. Picking it up here, he puts Grape Shot and Pyretic in the graveyard. So there's another, so I have to flash it back anyway, I guess. So I'm going to continue to empty out my hand. I don't even play the Brawl, that's crazy. I do have enough mana to play Brawl here. Yeah, yeah, okay. I guess I might as well. I could have done this without the Brawl, but... So three red, five red. I'm at 14 storm, 15 storm, 16 storm, 17 storm. So I don't even bother with splicing anymore. I'm, I'm announcing the storm upticks. So keep track of my red mana. So I'm at 18 storm and he's at 12. So he, he's dead, but I guess I'm just going to keep going. Off chance that, uh, I guess some off chance that he uh, has... No, he has no cards in his hand. Yep, grip shot. All right, and he is dead. Going to game three in the last round. So it's a pretty big difference now that I'm on the uh, draw. It's just such a huge difference. Uh, I have a lot of cantrips, and I think I might have a one lander. So I have a one lander, and I see two rituals on top, but I have no reducer. I have a flame slash. I keep it. That's kind of sus. I'm sure I like that. I think I, I definitely make a lot of questionable play decisions and mulligan decisions. Um, as you can tell, I am not a super experienced Storm player, even though I quite enjoy it. Okay, there's two lands. That's pretty good. So I find a Spire Bluff Canal. Um, I decided to just kill this guy. I'm not sure I love that. Oh, yeah, Spell Pierce. Oh, that's really bad for me. I have Triple Ritual, uh, another Slide of Hand, and another Blue Card. I think it's Gifts. It's like not a terrible hand. It's just that, that's too slow. I need to I need to win now. He did not plot a slick shot. I like that. Maybe I suggest he um that might suggest he's going for like interaction. So I shock in a pretty obvious remand here. I left remand in my deck. That's interesting. Not sure I like that. I guess it's not terrible. Depends on what I cut. Man, it's prowess is such a good deck. There's so many ways to build it too. I think I'm gonna try some kind of prowess deck. Oh, there's a plot slick shot. Oh, now I, now it's me. Under pressure. It's like usually storm. They feel like they're under pressure, but it's like it's me that I have to worry about what he's doing. So I have three lands. Did not hit another land. 
But three lands is usually enough to do stuff, but I do need a cost reducer. So triple ritual, double gifts. So if I needed to, I could invest in one of those gifts. But uh, I remand, he casts negate, which doesn't trigger prowess. He missed the surveil again. Okay, he hits surveil that time. I think it's I think I said something to him, like you've been missing surveil. So he surveilled, left on top with iteration. Puts card in his hand, plays the land, slick shot, only triggered once. Okay, so still alive. He has one mana open. I flame slash the slick shot. Okay, that should buy me some time. That's actually pretty good. So finding another flame slash is really good. I have three rituals and two gifts. Prowse creatures, not super good. Preordains, also not good. That's a lot of damage. I am in trouble. Definitely not looking good for the hero here, although I'm playing Storm, not so sure on the hero. Oh, geez. So three, six. Oh, I'm dead. Wow. Oof. So that was the deck. I actually thought it was really fun. I think uh, Gift Storm actually still has a lot of potential. I Both from gameplay and maybe some deck construction, I made a lot of mistakes, and I, I probably had outs to win every game except for round one. <laughs> he just ran me over. Uh, so let me know what you guys think, uh, if you have any other cool Storm ideas, and uh, thanks for watching.